Well, hello out there today. Welcome back to Financial Wellness University. Today we're looking at the question, is greed good? Stay tuned. Well, hello, welcome to Financial Wellness University. I am your teacher and coach, Joe Brown, and I will be looking at the question today. Is greed good? Uh, you might uh, be familiar with the question that was, uh, or the statement that was offered in a 1987 movie by a fictional character named Gordon Gecko. He said in his uh, portrayal of uh, someone who actually uh, the, the movie was based on said greed is good. That greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. So my question to you is, is greed good? I'm going to put a definition of greed right here on the screen. I want you to look and see if you evaluate what greed is and, and tell me, is greed good? Is it really good? Does it really help you? I agree that a person should have a hunger. A person should have a desire. But in my experience, greed is the opposite of generosity. For a person can't be greedy and generous at the same time. I would hate to live in a world where there was no generosity. But increasingly, we live in a world where greed is becoming the norm. Greed for more, greed for an unsatisfied, unsatiable appetite to, to take. See, I, I've never known anybody to go to, to prison for giving away their own items. And there may be a few, but the, the, the basic norm is if you are greedy, it makes you do things that are immoral. It makes you do things that are illegal. It leads to those kinds of things. One of the mis most misquoted passages of scripture is money is the root of all evil, which is really a misquote because the actual scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil. So when it comes to greed, most people who are characterized by greedy really have a love of money. When Gordon Gecko was talking about greed, he wasn't talking about sitting down at a table and eating. He wasn't talking about, he was talking about greed for money and wealth and power, which ultimately led the, the character that it was based on, the actual real person, spent many years in prison. But there still remains the question. How are you generous? What are you greedy or are you generous? You have to ask yourself that question. And in order to help solve that question, generosity actually counteracts greediness. When you consistently look for ways to help someone else, it 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 helps you not become a greedy person because you can't be greedy and generous at the same time. Now, giving occasionally is nice, but it, I believe in my experience that a person who regularly gives, regularly thinks about someone else, regularly uses a portion of what they have to help someone else, their life as a whole is better. They are happier people. There's a, a, a situation where a homeless man who didn't know where his next meal was coming from shared his meal 
with another homeless man. So that, that brings to light that our generosity is not based on our net worth or our bank account, how much we make per year. Generosity is a thing of the heart. So if you really have a heart to want to help people, then I suggest to you that you begin a journey of generosity. Now, I'm a man of faith, and I believe giving back 10% to my church, to the, 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 the organization that feeds me spiritually. Perhaps you don't have to be a person of faith to give. There, there are philanthropists, rich people who, who don't have a personal uh, faith per se, but they they see the benefits of giving. When you help someone and you see the look on their face, you realize giving is worth it. And we're really just stewards or managers of the money that comes through our hands. I show you this uh, right here. This is a $20 bill that I put in a little encasement to protect it. It's not worth a whole lot because it's all beat up. But, uh, but it's from 19... 34, a 1934 $20 bill. This $20 bill actually went through the Great Depression. It was, there, there, there's these people that handled this thing during the Great Depression, and up 90 years later, 90 plus, almost 90 years, is in my hands. Imagine all the hands is passed through. And in the next 90 years, It'll pass through some other hands. So what are you going to do with the money that passes through your hands? Is it going to just help you or is it just going to help someone else? I suggest that it helps you so that you can help someone else. And we can counteract. I hope this helps. This is uh, one of our lessons in Financial Wellness University, phase two, give. Phase two of the seven phases of financial wellness is give. So again, I hope, hope this helps you. Please uh, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell so that you'll be notified at each new video that comes available to you. And uh, I thank you for watching and have a blessed day.